Hello, hello. You are on Etiquette weekly live stream, and I am your host for today, Bonnie Esther. And Eric's not available, but I hope you'll come back and watch his other videos and see how he's doing. So we have lots of friends here today. We already have some people in the chat room. So let me let me kind of introduce you. So BB, I watch you watch my videos. Oh, I have to check, check this. I'll do all this right. Ah, speak slowly in contrast <laughs> to your lives. Yes, thank you so much, BB, for reminding me that on the live stream, I need to speak slowly. So I really appreciate that reminder. It was on my notes to self. And so starting out with that is very helpful. So if I start going too quickly, please just remind me. And I'm from, I don't know where, if you guess where I'm from. Can you guess from uh, everyone online? Can you guess where I'm from? What part of the world? You can type that in the chat. Some people know already. I'm from the United States. I'm from the New England region. Um, and I've I've lived in New England my whole life. So anyway, it's nice to meet you. Um, hi, thank you. Do Meng Hong from Cambodia. Wonderful, wonderful. My daughter lives lives in that region of the world. She's in Laos now. So I think about you folks in that region of the world. Nice to see you all. And hard-boiled English. Hi, Paul from Canada. And Eric Sr. will be maybe stopping in today. Eric might, might be visiting us when he can, but he's traveling, so he's not able to. So Omar from Lebanon. Welcome, my dear. Welcome. So nice to see you. Yes. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Paul. Oh, <laughs> were you talking to Eric about going to? He doesn't go too fast. I, I think I have that. So welcome, everybody. So I hope you're all having a great day. It's hot in many pieces of parts of the world. It's, it's hot here in New England. Omar, um, thank you for following me. Yeah, I have... Um, I've just gone onto TikTok, so actually, I uh, at some point I'll put that in the chat, uh, my TikTok link, so you can see what what I'm about to. Mostly fun stuff. Shakawa, nice to meet you from Kurdistan. I love to see people from all over the world. It's such a a, a treat. And from Bangladesh, Rafikel Islam Imu, so nice to see you. I'm sure I am butchering. Butchering means really destroying, right? Destroying some of your names. So forgiveness is requested already. Yes, I'm from North America. I'm from the United States of America, Omar. Very good. Eric is on vacation and he's not available. So um, he's he's he checked in with me before to make sure all the technology was okay, but he misses you and he wants you to have a, a good experience. And our experience today would hopefully include you asking me some questions about education or teaching language, and um, I'll do my best to answer them. Good evening to you, Binad. Nice to see you all. So I'm gonna have a. So you may ask me questions anytime. From Cambodia. Nice to meet you, Sothan, Mr. Sothan Thang. Nice to meet you. And I hope I'm getting everybody. I'm having a little. I'm, I'm, this is a little tricky to to use this. Greetings, Steve. Nice to know you. And Dominique from Ghana. Nice to know you too, Binad from India. Wonderful. Thank you. You're on Facebook. So, and. Ola Peju from Nigeria. Wonderful. Just love to see all these wonderful names. So my, my first name is Bonnie Esther. I don't have a middle name. So um, that's my first name. Linda, nice to know you, sweetheart. So India, sending some love through Vikas. So I'm um, from Southern Cambodia. So thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to um, I'm checking my message once in a while in case Eric has some questions for me. So I have a little activity for you to do today. One of the things I teach teachers, that's my field. I teach teachers in Massachusetts, in the United States, as well as um, in other countries. I, I also teach some online courses through an organization, a nonprofit that I do some consulting with. But for today, I'd like you to try out one of the activities that we do when we're on lives or we're on uh, teaching on Zoom, and that is glows and grows. So think about something that you glow at, that you're bright at, you're brilliant at, like something that you're really strong at as a teacher or as a learner or as a person, 
and then something that you would like to grow into. So you could type in the chat box, I glow at, hmm, I would like to grow at, hmm. So I'll tell you my glows and grows. I think one area where I really glow, where I really shine is in providing illustrations. If someone has a concept or they want an example or a story or um, a you know, a structure in English, I'm really good at providing that. So I think that that's an area of, of glowing. And I could, hopefully I'm inspiring when I do that. But an area of growth, and tell me, you can guess in the chat, it's a, it's a one word, it's a compound word, it has nine letters, and it begins with P. So that's your guessing question. So tell me how you glow and an area you'd like to grow at. So let me keep going down the chat. This is a little tricky. Federico from Italia. Nice to see you, Federico. Hi, Rafiko. It's nice to see you, my dear. Ah, from Myanmar. So uh, we've seen you before. So nice to see you, Kailash. Kailash. Um, mistress. <laughs> uh, oh, you all, you can watch it later, right? Asfia, come watch it later. So you can always come back to these streams later. And wonderful. This is an amazing channel, right? I found, um, I found, or it found me, Etiquette during the beginning of the pandemic when I was training teachers online. And I said, how do I do that? What do I, I need more resources. I need more support. And so that's when I found Eric's Etiquette Challenge. Hi, Silvania. Bon dia, minha filha. Bon tiver. Nice to see you, my dear. Hi, Julie. She's one of the teachers I've taught before. So she'll model how to do a glow and a grow. She's I could tell you what she, she is really good at. She's got some super skills. Zulfi from Indonesia. Look at we're all over the planet. I love this. Most unproductive advice related to teaching that you've ever been given or ever heard someone giving. Oh, please. <laughs> Steve, I could um I think people say know your students. And it's 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 so helpful. But sometimes it can be so overwhelming that teachers will shut down. I, I work I work have worked with some music teachers recently. They're like, I have 120 kids. I would like to feature the music of all of their lands. And so I think it's not as unhelpful. So I'm probably not asking, answering your question, but sometimes it just feels like you failed before you've started. Um, so the, the answer is we can know them, but we have to just take off a bite-sized piece, right? And we have to know them as best related to our content sometimes, right? What is their background knowledge of a topic or a concept that I'm presenting? And that's helpful. It does require time. It does require research. Um, but so so I kind of took your question and, and uh, took it a different way, Steve. But, but sometimes it's just that, yeah. Uh, so, um, and then that, uh, there's another thing that you hear people say is they, we, 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 we you are in our calendar in the United States. It's Christmas, the, one of the holidays at the end of the year. And people say, don't smile until Christmas. And I, I think it's you can smile, but don't, don't uh, be too loose. Be firm. Be very clear in your expectations. My mouse just took a ride. So um, I would say that, you know, don't, don't be mean. But, uh, but you certainly, that could, it's good advice. Thank you, Steve chuckling. <laughs> oh, I just chuckled. So that's really good. I'm probably skipping some. Yes, sir is absent. Eric is is on vacation. Doesn't he deserve it? He's been giving up so much free content for so long. Arun, so send some love to Eric. He'll he'll read this later. Practice. Uh, is that something you're good at? Or is that what you're glowing at? Bushra. Pineapple. Pineapple. <laughs> What's my, oh, oh, you were guessing my words. No, oh, you guys, it was so funny. Pineapple is a, is a, is a compound word, nine letters. Oh, that's hysterical. I love this. Ali, nice. Thank you for telling me you're from. Building up relationships with students, speaking as a native, as native speaker of English. So you'll get there, my dear. And uh, Omar, yeah, relationships. Very similar to what I was just talking about, right? Pineapple again. You guys are so funny. Um, I'm, I'm let, a few more guesses. Furat, hello everyone. Nice to meet you, Julia from Ukraine. I've um, I'm on TikTok and I've been enjoying meeting some people from Ukraine and getting a firsthand um, understanding of what you're going through. So blessings to our friends there. 
climbing trees. I really want to grow in classroom management. Yeah, climbing trees. D. So I, do you do that with your students sometimes? They probably get a kick out of watching you. Georgeline, nice to know you, hon. So happy to see you here. Providing engaging activities to practice their language. Collaborating with classroom teachers. Yeah, Shayla's um, a friend and she's phenomenal at providing engagement. And she didn't wait till smile till Christmas time. So she's a new teacher. So big love to all of you new teachers or people who are going into another field. Jeondosa James from South Korea. I'm all about South Korean um, things on TV. I watch them and I have a friend in South Korea. And I have a question that I asked Eric. He couldn't answer me. What do you serve with scallion pancakes? Do you serve some kind of sweet sauce, sweet sauce or something? But if you happen to know, uh, um, you would be uh, more knowledgeable in this particular topic than Eric has been. Oh, I've, I've, uh, Arun, I've enjoyed, I've substitute once and I've been a guest once, but um, it's fun. It's a little nerve wracking if uh, I'll be honest in terms of the tech, the technology and my vision. Um, and so I have to look at three different places, but I'm glad to be here. Hello from Saudi Arabia. Abbas, nice to know you, my dear. Is anybody, okay, whoops. Showing Aline, Aline, uh, showing huge interest in students concerning their needs, that empathy, that social um, emotional connection, hugely um, helpful for students, right? Because they're, they're gonna trust you. And Grow and making lesson planning. Yeah, my my word is related, not somewhat related to lesson planning. Listening to people, Dina, wonderful. Well, I I I love that. I so admire that. I think sometimes I talk before I listen. Oh, thanks, Arun. I I love the English language. I'm still not, you know, there are people on here who are a little better at grammar. I um, but uh, I have my wheelhouses that I'm pretty comfortable with. In acting, I teach by acting. Lovely, Linda. Lovely. Putting, putting on personas, exposing the students to different ways of doing things. And it's fun to put on, like, when you're speaking English. Like, I like on St. Patrick's Day, I used to speak with an Irish accent. It's kind of fun. Greetings from Zanyar. Eric deserves a break. Absolutely. Yes, I doubt. We fully appreciate how hard he works to deliver content to us. He is so faithful in that regard. He is really humble and faithful, and he takes it seriously. Like, um, I, I, uh, I'm just, I have a lot of things that I do for other courses that I run, and I write courses, and I do consulting, and so. Um, but he's really focused on his job for his students at the university, and then with su with supporting us teachers around the world. Zanyar, so nice to see you. Speaking and thinking quickly. Boshra, I'm curious, Boshra, I'm, does, is there a connection between that? Is it that you don't think you speak quickly because you don't think quickly? And not thinking quickly because you're taking your time and being discerning and responsible and sensitive is probably a really good thing because we all can be accused from time to time of speaking before we think. So I'm curious, you can share some more. Kimchi. Get served with everything. So scallion pancakes and kimchi, because I'm avoiding the kimchi part. We had uh, uh, Koreans live with us for a year. And um, let's just say kimchi had its own refrigerator um, on another floor of our house. <laughs> so um, I'm just not not that skilled. <laughs> oh, fun. Doing projects, Julia, with my students. Yeah, and project-based learning is a big thing in the States. And it's that organic way of getting at higher order thinking with English learners. It's also about um, getting them to talk, right? And us supporting them in developing their language. That's my field working mostly with teachers who have English learners in their classes in the States. How do you work with them? How do you make content comprehensible? How do you help them develop language while simultaneously accessing the content? That's my, my big deal thing. Seeing my students succeed, Steve, when using my guidance. Isn't that gratifying? You give them some support. We call it scaffolding when they need it, and then we remove it when they don't, and then they independently will be able to do what you've given them. So that's very gratifying. Good for you. I grow with every, every with the unending challenges. Yeah, in a private setting in Japan. So I teach English 
language, I said teachers of English language learners in the United States within the public school system and sometimes in private school systems. But in private settings, as you'll see, some of our guests here today uh, teach in all different settings and not all of them are, are, are English teachers or English as a second language or English as a uh, um, um, uh, foreign language. So yes, do are you want me? I hard boiled egg. Paul, helping intermediate advanced students understand the complexities of grammar. Yes, you do that, brother. You do that very well. I've uh, and sit in on his on his sessions. Put any information if anybody has any things that they offer. Please put your time somewhere in the chat box so we can we can uh, invite our guests to follow you. Helping beginners. Uh, and beginners, it's those short phrases, high frequency um, forms like the verb to be, the verb to have, and getting them speaking quickly and, and having lots of like adjectives and nouns so you can pop them in and have a lot of substitution activities and keep it moving, right? Um, but I see in sometimes that we neglect those higher level language forms. And my favorite higher level language forms to feature is the language of conjecture in English. I wonder what what would have happened if, if they were to know me in the future, what would they have said about me? Those structures are really what I call creepy grammar structures. And I think we neglect by teach, to teach the higher proficiency students that. So I, I'm always, that's one of the soapbox I get on. Well, I'll tell you my, my, my word is, my word is this, paperwork. Nine letters begins with a P, paperwork. Horrific. Paperwork, follow through. I write down great lists, can't find them. I, I have things here I'll probably write after this session and, and never be able to see the document again. So that's where I come short. And that's where people like Julie Miller, who's in this chat, she's been somebody to support me from in one of the schools that I work with sometimes. LinkedIn user from Pakistan. I love that we're all over the world here. Osvaldo Chavez. Muy buenos días, mi amigo. He is from Mexico. What about phonetics? Do you mean, um, do you have a question about that? Or is that um, something you're interested in knowing more about? So, um, and uh, pronunciation. Oh, oh, was that the word? Phonetica. <laughs> I love it. We're a bilingual answering here. Wonderful. Phonetica, no era. Si, pero podría, no? Um, Omatalani, I glow with, when leading and training people, like to grow up more collaboration with educators. And so much of it is time, right, sweetheart? Time in the, and I've been thinking, how can we communicate, how can we collaborate when we actually don't have any time with one another? What tools can we create? What correspondences or a checklist um, can we create to be able to have those relationships even though we really don't have the time? I think this is where the, where um, technology is our friend. Omatalani. Team building, collaboration, networking. Yes, hopefully network here, right? Network here. Indonesia present. Oh, Indonesia's in the house. Imam, nice to know you, my dear. With Korean pancakes, what should be served is Korean soy sauce. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And is it a little bit sweeter? Because I want. I think I want something sweet with those scallions. Thank you. Like I can sleep tonight. <laughs> it's morning here. It's um, 10 uh, not 9.20 in the morning. Um, also, I have a question for you today because I'm teaching this course for music teachers. I would like you to share with me, my fellow teachers of the world, what listening to American music, what role does that play in your teaching of language? Or is there are there certain songs or types of songs that people in your country love, um, especially related to like the Korean karaoke, things like that, where what kind of songs do people pick? And is it just age related? Is it just for older folks want standards? I would love to know music and I'd like to share this in my course. So anything related to music. When someone is talking to me in English, I had to think in my native language and then translate it in English. But while that process, I know that I take time to respond and start doubting myself. And sometimes I end up not answering and freezing. My love, I know this. Um, I'm married to someone who's learned English when he was an adult. And there's a delay time, right, between hearing and then processing that and then speaking. And I promise you that will get shorter over time. But it will it will take forcing yourself to be in those uncomfortable situations. But so my heart goes out to you. I've been there. I've, I speak Spanish and Portuguese as a, sec, a second language is and a, 
un peu de français, mais seulement uh, ugly, in an ugly way. But um, so yes, 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 yes. So keep, keep, keep heart. Paperwork. Uh, so um, hold on, go back here. Yes, paperwork. My nemesis. Cambodia, nice to know you, Chan. Nice to know you, my dear. Do you understand British accents? Yes, and I love them and respect them. I, um, I follow a lot of different people, and I love to hear British accent. In our country, in the U.S., British accent is a prestige accent. So you'll find that if some um, international corporations would like to hire someone that looks trustworthy and prestigious, they might put somebody on the phone who has a British accent. So um, I, and, uh, I, I respect all languages. Marilyn from South Africa, nice to know you, my dear. The people from, oh, that's my that's the that's my husband there. So he also teaches English to Brazilians. Oh, did you join late, <laughs> Eric Senior? So nice to know you. Nice to have you here. So Eric's dad is here. So so uh, he always supports us. Abo, hello. Nice to know you. Where are you from, my dear? Where are you from? From Cuba, Lázaro Rodríguez Fernández. Muy buenos días, mi amigo. Okay, Siam, hello, nice to know you. Nice to know you. Thank you for joining us. So if you missed the, the, the prompt today, it was what is one thing you glow, you shine at as a teacher, and one area you grow? So I glow at um, providing examples and illustrations, not drawn, by the way, that's a whole different thing. But And I, I need to grow at paperwork, follow through, invoices, deadlines, nah, 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 all those things I just detest. Project making in English, Tahera, yes. So, um, yeah, and you have to think about the, the language that you might use when you're doing those projects, right? Having a targeted form, like listening to directions, giving directions, or describing how you feel when doing an activity. So, yes, you can learn. Patricia, I wonder if you could help me some ideas to teach very young learners online who can't read or write yet. Thank you so much. Young readers, it's about vocabulary and short phrases. Actually, I have a TikTok. I just put a little, um, let me see. Let me get this copy, copy link. Come back here. Um, I'm putting in the chat. It's my TikTok. I just put one up here today for the parts of your face. Let's see, that we have two parts to our faces and some things are two, so it's vocabulary. Songs, rhymes, games. So I'll, the, the, one of my videos is an illustration of that. Um, and it's having a visual fit. Like if you're online, having visual things like which is the dog? Is this the dog? No. Is this the dog? No. Is this the dog? Yes, this is the dog. Yes, this is the dog. And they repeat. Yes, this is the dog. So there are a few people I found on, I wouldn't remember um, online, but there are some really good people on uh, YouTube who provide those lessons. Oftentimes they're in foreign language settings. So Patricia, where are you from? Patricia Beltran. Um, so I hope that was a little bit of help. So, um, and, and sometimes a young learner can identify words, meaning read them and identify them, point them out, um, circle them. Sometimes on, on um, online, you can put like a jam board and put pictures and have, have the kids, if they're able to physically circle or make a mark, like you have a whole picture of birthday parties on a jam board and you make it be the background. Then you say, where's the cake? Where's the cake? And the student can put a little mark next to the cake. I've done this. Uh, I have um, grandchildren in other countries and I'm the best Zoom grandma. If anybody wants Zoom grandma, how to, how to do language and engage with your grandchildren. Osvaldo Chavez, when I said phonetic, I wanted to say that I think that is important to teach how to produce some specific English sounds that other languages don't have. Absolutely. The, we look at um, the uh, contrastive sounds in other languages. America, American English, we have this ah sound. It's awful. It's like an A and an E. So I think of hat, ah, I'm putting my hand up, ah, and I'm thinking of air, like hand, ah, and air. Those are distinctive. Um, sounds that we, and sometimes they're different between British English and American English. And so to have ex, extra practice. So if you said hot, I would be like hat, hat. I'm giving this little clue about that. Also the stop T at the end of words. We don't, we don't say the T. We don't say the T. We don't say the T. So it's practicing. We don't usually pronounce it. But if your parent is angry with you, they will pronounce the T at the end of your name. 
tell me if I'm wrong, um, speaker, native speakers of English. Hello, Mina Miller. I'm probably so far behind, so I'm just gonna forgive me later. Soft rock and romantic music. And do they like the sing-along capacity, Sylvania? Uh, why do they like that? What do you find that in romantic? Oh, Brazilians, good grief. It's all about the romance. Ah, Korean soy sauce tastes different than Chinese soy sauce. Saltier, lighter in color, less sweet. Okay. All right. I do like a little sugar, a little sweet, but thank you. That's very helpful. Dr. V. Sangeetha from India. Nice to know you. Welcome. Welcome. Are you American in origin? Yes. I was born in New England, the United States, and I've lived in the New England States my whole life, but traveled around a little bit. Um, from Mexico. And Midnio Bautista, nice to know you. Are you strict or lenient? I go back and forth. I'm, I, and that some of my students, my adult students here, my, I think I start out making making my expectations pretty high, but I'm a softy. I'm a softy. We say I'm a softy, and I, and I, I teach a lot of teachers online, and this is a tough time, folks. People have illnesses. People lose loved ones. I, in all my courses, people will get sick. And I, and I think we have to be compassionate. So, um, compassion, so lenient, compassionate will lead us to being flexible, maybe not lenient, although I think I'm sometimes lenient. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you for sharing anything. Anything I need to be shared on here would be helpful. Uh, Eric just helped post my, post my stuff. Oh, this is one of my daughters. Hi, mom. I glow at flexibility and thinking of m on my feet. Hugely true, my daughter. Adjusting to newly discovered needs in students. Wonderful. That's that responsive teaching, right? Of course, I struggle with sticking to the prescribed plan and schedule. Yes, we have some other people like that. And maybe you, maybe there's a good reason you, uh, you have that. Maybe you inherit it from your mommy. So uh, my daughter lives in Laos. So I'm I'm very interested for people who have learned and are learning a tonal language. Huge respect. That would be on my bucket list to learn a tonal language. So hello, Kemal. Nice to see you. Patricia, you're from Peru. Saludos. Hablas muy, muy lindo. Oh, gracias. Y hablo perro, hablo uh, portugués mejor. Pero um, puedo hablar el español también. I am fluent. This is an interesting topic. I'm fluent, but I'm not proficient like if you listen to my grammar i avoid things evito el subjuntivo porque es mal es muy difícil en español también el negativo so sometimes i avoid the subjunctive in spanish especially in the negative so we want students to have practice with us if we're teaching languages getting comfortable in the lab environment um to be able to practice it so that they won't avoid it so don't mistake that fluency for um proficiency Primary students like listening to funny and cheerful songs and rhymes. Secondary students prefer listening to modern music like Billie Eilish. Yes, wonderful. Um, that's very helpful. This is very helpful. I'm thinking about other things. Kemal, keep it up. There, um, um, Eric is always pointing to people that on Facebook, they have someone put the name of the place where you can practice English. It's a reg on a regular basis. Would someone please help me with that link? Um, I don't know why, it's, it's a real easy like English chat or something. Wichita L. Nor, nice to know you. Where are you from? I don't know. You can learn by listening, by listening to anyone, right? And listening to anyone from Algeria. Yes, Mina, nice to know you. And I have a, um, this is my, somebody could put this, Banani and me learning English together. I have some videos where I, instructional videos, if somebody put the link, the real link to that um, in, in YouTube, I don't have many videos. I came up with them during the pandemic because I was watching teachers and they were just reading stories. And I said, there have to be some ways where we can have students practice content. And one of my granddaughters, who's, whose mom is here, I remember she turned to her mom and she said, because she calls me Banani, because my name is Bonnie, Bonnie Esther, and Nan, and I'm a Nana, I'm a grandmother. So she called me Banani. So she said, she said, Mom, can Banani hear me <laughs> in America? So the answer is, let's never tell her. But um, we know the answer to that. But very good, Mohammed. Thank you. So tell me your glows and grows if you haven't told me yet. 
Abir, would you mind giving on tips on how to teach vocabulary and grammar for secondary school learners? Um, I'm thinking about what proficiency level you might be talking about, Abir, but it's having a targeted structure like um, I would like, like a modal, I would like, and then having a body of vocabulary that would fit nicely into that. Uh, it could be verbs. I would like to go to the movies. I would like to visit, um, where are you from, Abir? I'd like to visit where you're from. So it's having having a structure in a body of vocabulary. So it's not just here's one sentence and I'm giving you access to it. It's really practicing that. And, and we organize words by their function, the adjectives. We don't, we, we don't organize words by the alphabet. That's kind of A is for arbitrary. It's a little arbitrary, but by function. So will these sensory adjectives be helpful for me today? Will this body of vocabulary, if I'm doing a recipe, will all the kitchen items, the, the utensils and tools, that be needed? So it's really having both of that way. But it's trying to have oral language first, charts on the wall to have these bodies of vocabulary so that students can use them, or handouts and things like that. Yeah, I think we're being trolled by Eric Sr. I'll be very careful. Uh, yeah, so thank you for sharing, sharing Paul, where uh, I boiled English. Hope you great vacation. Nobody deserves it more. Mm, yes, yeah, sending love. So put, put love in the chat box. Eric will read it later. To you, Kemal. You can listen to me here. Um, um, hopefully, I'll do more content on TikTok. TikTok has some really good things and it has some really be careful things. Tonal languages. Yes. I think that, do you speak any tonal languages? Yeah. When when we say ma and ma and ma, somebody can, i poorly representing that. But but it's the sound. Um, and we have, um, Spanish has like a one-to-one -one sound relationship between letter and sound. It's super easy to decode and encode, to write in and read in because of that. But then, and then English is very opaque, very hard. We have at least 14 sounds and we have 26 letters and we borrow letter words, a lot of words from other languages. So ours is tricky, but the tonal languages that would be, is, uh, you know, training our ears to be able to hear those distinct differences in the, the notes of the words. So I'm just, oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, good morning, Gloria Reyes, Reyes from Mexico City. I would like to ask you, how do you encourage your students to study and practice by themselves when they're not in their class? So helpful. I think we have to appeal to different aspects of a student. Um, so uh, nowadays we try not to give like easy baby work, like word searches and puzzles. And yet when I had a student from Korea live with us, she was over her head in classes all day long. And, and just the idea of searching for a word with a highlighter for her was very gratifying. So sometimes we want things that are gratifying and helpful. It could be to watch a movie, part of a movie with closed caption on first in English, English spoken and English closed caption, then to, to, uh, to put it maybe in your own language and do variations of that thing so we can uh, ultimately have, have it with no closed caption, just the spoken English. So, um, also gamifying things, making like if the next day, if you've made a homework assignment, say, well, everybody who had done their homework assignment, put your papers here and they make sure it's finished. So I look, I look at you, Gloria, finish, right? I put it in there and then I'll say, I'm going to pick one of these for a prize. Boom. And you pick a prize. So obviously you could not get a prize, a silly little ridiculous fuzzy something or some cute little object. But I think it's making it a light competition. Um, so also other, my friends here in your chat, all of you folks add to this because it's such a good question. Yeah. And you can grade them by that. If that's going to be helpful, what homework that they did or, um, dare I say fake grade them? Subjuntivo. Yo te puedo ayudar un poquito si deseas. Muy bien. Es muy difícil incluso para nosotros. No, verdad. No sabía. I didn't know that subjunctive was hard for Spanish speakers, but you use it a you use it a lot and I'm, I'm not great at it. So thank you for that offer, Patricia. Do you need any help with English? <laughs> so I'm pretty good with English. Mohammed from Pakistan. Thank you. Uh, why don't you work in South Korea like Eric? Um, I'm, 
I like working. I teach, teach a lot of classes online. I, I work for an organization called the Massachusetts Association of Teachers to Speakers of Other Languages. So matsall.org. I do a lot of work with them. And so um, they have courses that I teach. I teach um, in other capacities, help districts out. But I would love to see Korea. I want to go. Mr. Ibrahim Goma. Hello, everyone. Nice to know you. So we have friends on LinkedIn. Tell me what's an area from Upper Egypt. Tell me what's an area where you glow, where you're really good at, and where you'd like to grow. A glow and a grow. And anything related to people in your lands and in your instruction, what kind of uh, um, music in English speaking music do they like and why? I've taught ING, form Jose Castellanos using Lemon Tree Song. I love that song. I'm a big fan of the older songs. Able to, Lemon Tree, very pretty, and the lemon flower. They say pretty. Pretty. Nice to know you. Nice to know you. Is that language, tell me what language that is, because it has a lot of those curlies. Is that gorgeousness? Super cool. Like art. I love it, because it's so distinct for us, if we don't know that. Hello for Afghanistan, Mohammed Zia. Nice to know you, my dear. Tunisia, you're very welcome to visit us. Abir, yes. Don't you all wish we all had a lot of money and time and could just visit each other? I think that'd be so much fun. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, crack on with my day. There's some expression I never heard. You must crack on with his day. Cheers from Canada. So there are neighbors up there. I'm in New England, so Canada ain't that far. I've been up to Toronto. Toronto, is that as far as I've gotten? Yes. Um, Luzan, nice to know you. Nice to see you, honey. It's nice to see you. Why an English learner finds so difficult to pronounce certain words in English? Yes, because you don't have them. Your muscles haven't been trained to do that. You don't use the th, the theta, th, the vibrating form, right? Th and th. one is vocalized and one is not. And so you will put a substitution like uh, an F, an S, right? Something else. So we have to be forced to do that, right? To get those. Uh, so yes, absolutely, Lazang. How can I teach rhymes to first graders who do not yet, who do not write yet, without overusing them? Amigdio um, Bautista. Yeah, um, making like a song where the end has a rhyme, and we could do it hat and cat, like, like for first graders, they playing with language is fun. So you could. Have them pick words. So maybe having a chart and having some rhyme words that are spelled the same initially. Don't try homophones. Don't try sale and sale, S-A-L-E, and pale, P-A-I-L, right? Pick If they were spelled the same, the students can identify that. So I would say start with that spelling if I'm not off base. And some of my elementary teachers might be able to help with that. Yeah, overusing them. So a designated time, adding music, adding rhythm. You know, so you do some sort of rhythmic pattern and it's not going to be, um, so do a little bit of it every day and pick, pick which ones you want to work on. And um, especially ones like in Spanish, like we're going to say, oh, it's a diphthong. Oh, like home, home, roam, comb. If I did a word like home and comb, I would not write them. I would just have a picture, not write them because it would be too confusing because of the spelling of comb. Is that helpful a little bit? I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Gloria. Status of teaching grammar for beginners. Zanyar. Interesting. In different parts of the world, they'll say, this is a noun, this is an adjective. These are our articles. And um, so that's the metalinguistic part, using the titles of those. And, uh, and in the United States, it's been kind of out of fashion, but it's kind of coming into fashion. Um, I'm a big proponent of it, but... Um, but I don't, but people can make other choices. So we want to have a structure that's targeted, practiced, and we remember that, that what it was yesterday, and we're going to build on it tomorrow. So maybe making the sentence longer, or we're doing singular words today. I have a dog. And then tomorrow I have some dogs, and I'm underlining or, or highlighting in color some, and then the S for dogs. And maybe I start with singular, regular nouns instead of moving to calf and calves. So it's targeting something. I think uh, it's very important. Mina, for this year, I'm really interested in teaching my students how to perform plays on stage. But as I've never done this before, I wonder 
if you have some tips or pieces of advice that would help me get started. This would be so beneficial. Thanks for your response. Um, and um, I, I've only done a little bit of reading scripts out loud, and there are a lot of online things. But I think uh, if you were talking about proficiency levels to learn English, could you be a little um, more specific in your question in terms of performing plays? Also, uh, there is a thing called Reader's Theater, where you have a speaker, and then they act it out like The Boy Who Cried Wolf, where I had where you could maybe feature, only one speaker was reading and the students were listening to the English, listening to their parts, mouthing their parts, but it was one person reading it. Um, and then, so we're working on the acting and then now we're working more on the language. So separating that two, because maybe they're, um, I don't know, that's one one small idea, but I, I kind of want, want um, I've, I've written some plays um, musicals, more like musicals that had that. So I, I wish I could be more helpful. I would like to know more. <laughs> and Eliane Ponce, Argentina, um, T, um, TPRS. You not that's not total physical response. Something. Help me out with that. Take on. Help help me that, Eliana. I might know it and can't remember at this moment. Please help remind me about that, or tell me if I don't know. Bangladesh, Sama, Sohamad. Hello from Nebun Asan. Okay, Jackie. Perfect. Perfect. Back to you, sweetheart. I'm not sure what that was. You're welcome. Amidnio, Amidnio. Building. Building. Yes. Great. Main methods or techniques can be used in classroom management. Icham. Having clear guidelines, we come up with what our norms would be, and we have students agree to that, and then we let um, let them reinforce it, like um, something like getting the kids to not to not to rat on each other or to tell on each other, but say, "Would anybody? Does anybody think we need to revisit our guidelines or our um, our norms for how we'll behave during this particular discussion?" We just need to re remind that, you know, um, but watch that it doesn't turn into everyone's tattletaling, telling on one another. Um, we don't want that. And clear directions. Classroom management often happens when the instructor honestly hasn't been completely clear in their expectations. And so it's it, the students were forced to kind of ask one another or they might be intimidated by asking you. Are you someone who will say, if you want me to repeat the directions, raise your hand. I'll be glad to do so, or I'll be glad to come over to you and do so. So, um, yeah, that and, and your friends might have some other ideas here. Why is it so hard to learn grammar, um, John Wilson? I think we don't get sufficient targeting, affirmation that we're learning it, practice before we're on to the next thing. And if you just try to learn grammar through a a regular book. Sometimes we don't have patterns repeated often enough. Do, do any of those sound, um, you know, sound like what you've seen? And because we do have some flexibility, and in English there are certain types of sentences we can move around with some flexibility. Um, but a, a, a basic grammar book with topic, practice questions, move on, is very helpful. I can't think of um, a title for one, but I hope that was a little bit helpful for you. Nice to meet you, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mohammed, what method could be effective for learning grammar for a beginner? I think I addressed that in terms of finding a targeted, easy form, practicing it, having the grammar, but then having sufficient vocabulary accessible so that you can do something with it. Sometimes it's used the form, but it's too... It's too vague or it's not supported enough. Excuse me, itching. Hi, Pramod from India. Clear and short directions. That's a big thing, right? Yes. Yeah. And revisiting as necessary. Yes. Um, I, I, oral language production, practicing the structure out loud. I always say it won't come out of your pen and onto a paper unless it's come out of your mouth. And so speaking structures 
the right kinds of prompts that will elicit the kind of grammatical structure. Like if I want an opinion, opinion, I would have to ask you, what do you think about? And then you say, I consider this to be, maybe that's a structure. Okay, not seeing any more questions here. Are there more questions below? Have I missed some? Do you have any more questions? Thank you, Wahab. So I think I might tell you um, how I got in this field. I was uh, a stay-at-home mom, and then I became a teacher of Spanish. My students went, my children went to private schools, and I taught Spanish as a volunteer. Then I got paid, and then I um, was invited to a district to work with them. They said, if you learn, I knew Spanish, and they said, if you learn Portuguese, we'll give you a job. And I said, Okay, so I learned Portuguese through the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth, which has this intensive summer program to learn Portuguese. And the grammar in Portuguese in Spanish is super similar, except for I would say Portuguese is a little easier. And the spelling and sound in Spanish is a lot easier than Portuguese, but they're related. And so I learned Portuguese, and then I became a bilingual teacher of math and science to speakers of English, of Spanish and Portuguese, mostly Brazilian Portuguese. And, um, and then I became a teacher, a director of a program, and now I train teachers. So it's my distinct honor to train teachers to be able to go out and to be able to make their content more comprehensible as well as to develop English from their topic, their content area, and develop it with their students. Oratory skills. Prom uh, promote. Having the right kind of prompts, having sufficient resources to support the use of the language structure, um, and um, and oratory skills. I think to have different ways to do it. Like if a shy student might try out with puppets or using a microphone behind a screen. But then eventually, we want to have role plays. We want to have dialogues. We want to have um, scripts, like someone was was talking about, be able to have performances. So having all those different ways of doing language, right? Um, recording, using things like Flipgrid um, to be able to have recordings and to respond back to one another. So, and then um, if you're going beyond that, it would be watching like TED Talks and what does a good orator do? And, but yet all students might not be going there, right? I know people who do, um, what do they call it? Toastmasters, right, to write speeches. So maybe I don't know what they have online to see from Toastmasters. I hope that's a little helpful for you. Gloria, could you recommend a technique or sources to learn and understand slang? Sometimes it's really hard to find the meaning of some words or expression, mainly in modern songs. Yes, um, because they're not, um, they're, they come out of context, right? They're in a context. And so lists of idioms online, everybody has lists of idioms. And my favorite way to search is to say idioms. And then when you search, put, um, uh, not pictures, photos. So you see charts of people. So if you find idiomatic expression and slang that relate to a topic, like, but but uh, they don't come up so frequently, like they can, they can be random in, in terms of when you're, it's hard to teach teach those specifically. I've had see, saw a book in the past, which was a whole bunch of them related to a topic like misunderstandings. But, um, but I can't, I have, I've always wanted to find that book again. Yes. And a lot of dictionaries will say different ways. Like I like the learner dictionaries online because sometimes they'll tell you, they might tell you how something is used idiom idiomatically. Um, yeah. And in modern songs, you're going to see them done for, um, it, they're done because they're, cool and delightful and a play on words and are culturally significant. And so um, sometimes it really is finding out what it was and just helping that particular application at that understanding at that moment. So it's hard to develop them um, without um, looking them up. And when you are searching, put in, in parentheses the whole phrase, like um, the whole phrase in, in quote marks, and then you're going to have that l search help you better. If, that, if you know what I mean. Did I explain that well? Eliani, teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling. It's a method of, oh, yes. Uh, reading, uh, yes. I, I'm i very, there's been times when I've wanted to teach and have used a text itself 
to teach the language and storytelling. Um, but but I, I haven't been doing that. I haven't been in that classroom with students in a long time. I would say it's got a lot of good stuff. I would say sometimes it might not be systematic enough because sometimes you need to force a structure. So sometimes if I pick a reading and it's too, uh, the language is too archaic or not helpful, will they get enough practice within that reading? But I would love to see that in action. I will look up some of those videos. Thank you so much. I think we answered that. Hi, Salma. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Seat work good for students, not in reading groups. Um, I think uh, um, we have a lot of uh, like ro rotating play stations would be helpful to not to use up all of our class time in that kind of thing. But but there are students who love to take their time and read slowly and carefully and do an activity, and it's very satisfying. So I think ju done judiciously, I, I, that could easily be a part of that. Um, but, but, uh, but with language, so I don't know if you're talking about language, language, I want to do listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So my seat work can't always be just writing or it can't just be filling in blanks. That would be, um, rigorous, linguistically rigorous enough. Yes, Sylvania, they're similar. How, how to find, to, it's hard to find more English resources. Jean, yeah. Yeah. Um, being able to search online is like things I've learned over time, ways to help me find resources and not. But um, but there are a lot of people sharing a lot of free stuff. Yes, worksheets to reinforce. Some, But sometimes you one or two examples is enough. And um, so is it, we don't want to think about busy work. And there's a, Jessica Gonzalez has a podcast about worksheets. And um, it, um, you might enjoy looking at that. Um, I forget what the other thing is. I want my, I mean, I want to act out very short plays. For example, I've got a very short summary of Shakespeare's Romeo. I'd like my students to memorize the very short dialogues. I think that the technique has memorization, pronunciation, learning vocab, facing the, uh, yes. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that would be valuable. Um, um, and, and I always think of memorization, but that's the only caution, like, um, how much, how often, and does it promote if we're working about, so I'm not, still don't know what you're talking about with uh, English language arts or an ESL setting, teaching English as a second language. But absolutely, all of those are, are helpful. It's just, is it, is it enough practice? And I love the shyness, those affective, emotional parts, super helpful. How to get command over language, Pramod. I would say don't ignore the parts that you need help with. Like command is really reading a lot um, and and not, you know, then, then doing the research to look up a grammatical form that you might need some support with um, and brought and to collect language. Like if I'm listening, I, I know someone I've, I was um, helping her, my dental hygienist, I was helping her with the TOEFL test to be able to get into dental school here in the U S and she memorizes pieces of language. She likes, she thinks that that would be very helpful. Uh, like how am I introducing um, a new paragraph? And th there are a lot of things online that, that are offering that now transition terms, uh, signal terms. If you look up signal terms for um, sequencing, you'll might find lists of things that you go, Oh, I don't use that one. I could develop that. Mohammed Salim. If I'm improving my speaking, what can I do in my English speaking? I'm not able to express my feelings. Um, uh, it'd be great if you were in more of a structured environment where somebody could work with you, like in that English club that I was talking about where you're forced to be with somebody, with another per uh, uh, speaker of English, because it's hard to get good at everything all at once, right? And it might be that you need confidence and work on some of your pronunciation things um, because it is developmental. Like I, you can't like argue positions about um, a topic when you're first learning a language. The language of argumentation is pretty sophisticated. You need to develop into that. So, but expressing your feelings, you might also look at just type in uh, feeling words and um, and then you could look up, I feel, I think, I wonder about. So it might be that you need a, a body of vocabulary to support that. I know that's not completely helpful, but I hope it's a little bit helpful. 
You're welcome, Gloria. Um, who's the monkey game? I've only looked at it a little bit, so I will I will go back and look at that. But I, I like everything he creates. So bear, bear. And we had an aspirin title. So we still have bear aspirins. Spell. I'm not sure how it's spelled. Ono Bayer. That's what you go by. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm not reading all your whole names because I'm I'm, I'm going to only butcher one or two names. But thank you for telling me that was your name. What did you do to learn Spanish and Portuguese? I mean, can you share with us some methods or techniques that personally you use to learn language? I learned some Spanish um, when I was a kid, and I like languages. I'm not afraid of it. I'm I'm I like speaking, as you can tell, and singing, and so um, I think I had a natural interest in it. Um, and I got a lot of feedback that was positive from the first experiences I had. Um, and I was brave about some things. Um, but in fact, but it was hard when I, when I was, when I was, when you're learning a language with other people at your same proficiency level, you're not going to be that intimidated. But when I would speak with a native speaker of those language, I would be like, I'll never get this. And I'd be embarrassed. And I think I've had to get over some of that. So four more minutes. I'm going to fly. Tip to able to translate and say while translating. And lose on that. That will come with time, sweetheart. I only have four more minutes, so I wish I could give you more of that. Correct their speaking sentences. You don't do it at that moment. You write them down later and you and you find patterns between students because research shows that if you correct them then, they're not learning. It's just for the benefit of everybody else. So you have to decide, and was it just they got their story out quickly and that was more important, or is it really necessary to correct them? Usually when it's targeted practice, you correct. Club for Spanish Spoken Improvement. Nyla, that, Farouk, that's a place on Facebook I can't remember the name of. Oh, and you can ask next time or ask here, and then um, next time Eric will remind you of that. Most important routines you set up in the classroom before starting the lesson. Materials, where do we have access to materials? Is something written where I can kind of a checklist, maybe at the front of the board? Um, and also, I have a friend and she does this constantly. I give the directions and I say, tell your neighbor what the directions are. Very helpful. How do you adapt your activities when you have a multi-level class? I... I have a hard time with this grouping thing because I know that some people are bored because it's too hard, too easy, and some people are lost because it's too hard. So I would think you could create an ad adaptic text. Um, look up Breaking News English. They have a lot of texts that are at different levels, and so you can get the same kind of concepts and background knowledge and vocabulary but uh, different activities. So breaking news English might be a new friend for you if you don't know it already, Gloria. So we only have a little bit of time left. Any last minute questions? I don't see any more last minute questions. Maybe we've all gone home or gone back to our day or back to bed if it's late where you're where you are. Yeah, breaking news English. I can't tell you how often I use that. It's a great substitute teacher's lesson. You're welcome. So say ciao to your friends um, if you're if you're leaving now. Eric will be here next time. It was my pleasure to meet you. Um, Bonnie Esther, I spell my name. You see how I spell my name, B-O-N-I, if you're looking for me on social media. And on Facebook, it's just Bonnie Esther Enquist on Facebook. That's me. Um, oh, okay. How do you, let me see if there's any more questions I have. You're welcome, Eric Sr. Nice to see you all. Fluency in language, you're there in terms of you have the right attitude. Keep working on it. Don't be, you know, just don't, uh, don't get lackadaisical and but it does take, it's developmental too. So it will come naturally, sweetie. Jean Wilson, nice to know you too. You're welcome. Good. Glad you enjoyed being here, Luzon. I think people are having fun in the summer. So um, it's been a real treat to be with, to be with you all.
Blessings to you all. Be safe, be well, keep inspiring your students um, and accept your limitations, um, like accept yourself, right? We're all growing, especially when you're in this language field. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to help with that. I don't have a much experience in the international school setting, Sarah. I think <clears throat> you might find that Eric is gonna be sharing things like that. <coughs> Thanks, Steve. Nice to, nice to have spent some time with you. So I'm going to say ciao, Carmen. I'm going to say ciao for now. It was nice to see you. Ciao, everybody. Blessings.